today i have another ceramic video for you guys and i'm just showing you the process of how i work out of my little home studio and start with bags of wet clay and hand build some really cute stuff it's a long process but very rewarding and you're gonna see it condensed in this video so this is the second time that i'm working and making a collection at home but the first time that i'm really making it for my brand like for my previous collection i didn't really know where i was going when i started it but this time i really want to try like giving ceramics a bigger chance and make pieces to sell so i'm making multiples of some things but i'm still keeping it really small bad so i use a lot of the slab method for my work which is basically just rolling clay out to a uniform thickness and then i also use cookie cutters which help me make some cute stuff and here i'm working on little incense stick holders that I designed. I had already made one of these for my previous collection so I tweaked the design a little and I'm making a bunch of them. I slip and score before you know attaching the pieces together. You do that just to make sure that they bond nicely. A lot of ceramics is just learning patience and learning to work at things at the right consistency. For example, to do certain steps you need the clay to be a certain wetness but then to work on it further you need it to get a little bit drier. So I'm always working on multiple things at once and as I finish working on the flower incense stick holders I moved on to making the next thing and this is also something that I am um, repeating for my previous collection. I'm making these little mini cat figurines. It's just like they're based on a cone and then I add some features to them. Now that I'm done working on the cats for today, I move back to the incense stick holders and I'm just making the holes where, you know, the sticks will rest and clay shrink. So I have to take that into account and make these just right. That's enough work for today. I can come back to this stuff tomorrow. And this is tomorrow. The stuff is a little drier. I'm burnishing a little bit with my clay needle and that just gives it a nice clean surface to work on. And I'm adding some features since the clay is now the perfect consistency to carve into. So I added some legs and all of that and also stamped my logo into the bottom. And now I'm moving on to making some leaf dishes. It was monsoon when I was working on these and most of my plants were growing like crazy. A little too much for an apartment window. I had to prune the leaves. So instead of just discarding the pruned leaves, I'm making dishes with them. So I just roll out the clay to a certain thickness and then add the leaf and roll a little bit more so that the clay gets all of the impressions and indents from the leaf. I also wanted to attempt a decorative ceramic spoon so I decided to try the two different methods. This one is a slab method where you know I'm going to roll a flat slab and then carve the spoon out of that slab and then I'm also trying a second method which is like pinch and coil method. They're both different styles of hand building. This is going to turn out a little bit more like a ladle but while those dry I move back to refining the shape of the leaf dishes, raise them a little bit, move back to the spoons and I know this looks a little chaotic but I think this is a good way to work like while something is drying I just switch back and forth between the things and I'm showing you guys my process.
and now I'm moving on to building with a second clay and I was trying this clay out for the first time I had a rough idea of what it may look like after firing but I wasn't really sure and I decided to conquer my fear of building something larger and try to build a planter I just kind of followed it in a methodical manner and I made some mistakes along the way but I could fix them it just took me a little bit more time and as I'm waiting for those slabs to dry a little I decided to work on something else something small make these cute little flower dishes and back to the planter I need the slab to be the ideal dryness before I start attaching them Now I'm working on some more leaf plates with this darker clay. I wanted to have like a raised design throughout the planter so I just made another small slab and cut out some flowers, refine the rim of the planter, just plot where every piece is going to go and make sure to attach them well using the same slip and score method. Peeling the leaves off the clay is something that I do carefully and it's always a very satisfying part of the process for me. After this I just let everything rest for one more day. You can see that they are in the stage of like drying. This is when I decided that I just wanted to carve the undersides of the leaf plates just to kind of see how it would look. So I tried it on one and I really liked the look. So I moved on to doing it with the next one as well. Now I'm building the last few things for this batch. I decided to try and make a very simple base plate for the bottom of the planter just to kind of catch the excess water. And I was building like a very simple slab thing with raised walls. And I did kind of make a mistake here which I realized at the end end and if you keep watching the video you'll see what I mean just before wrapping up the day's production I thought that I would try my hand at some simple coasters were cute and I was anxious to see how they would turn out later on. After building everything and letting it dry for a few days, one really important thing to do is sponging and here you just kind of take a slightly damp sponge, no excess water. The pieces are somewhat fragile at this stage and occasionally you lose things but if they break, you can recycle the clay because it's not been fired and sponging always helps with refining the finish a lot so wherever you see like sharp marks after sponging it will just be like softer and better finished and after I finish this step I just kind of arrange them neatly in boxes to be transported for firing because even though I make everything at home any hobby ceramicist needs access to a kiln that's not easy to have a kiln at home so I go to a local studio, the IES Center for Ceramic Design to fire my wear and I actually have a vlog in my studio if you'd like to see it I'll link it on the screen now. It's a really great place to learn and I love going in and getting my wear fired there. Those are my things and they're going to go in a really large kiln now. I was very excited about this. Most ceramic ware is actually fired twice and this was for the first firing, the bisque firing. 
and now I'm getting ready to decorate everything. This is my little collection of uh, glazes and under glazes that I use. And I've even made some of my own stains in those bottles. Before I decorate them, I decided to sand some of the pieces. I've not sanded previously, but I want to work on having like nicer finishes. So I'm dipping my bisqueware in water and sanding it. After it dries, I can start decorating it. Clay is sort of still porous at this stage. So you can see it gets saturated with water and then it dries also very, very quickly. Like if you look here, I've not sped up this clip at all. You can see it has the water, but then if you take it out of the water, it just dries right in front of your eyes. I'm using a clay slip that I made to do some inlay work. I've carved the wear when it was still wet. Now I'm going to apply colorant and wipe the surface so that the colorant only goes into the carved grooves and not like on the surface. And then I also decided to use the same clay slip to decorate the spoon. The slip was not working out for this. I think this kind of decoration works better when the clay is still wet before the first firing. So I'm just showing you guys the design I made but ultimately I didn't like it so I wiped it off and did it with under glaze. And here I'm applying transparent glaze to an incense stick holder that I made. And this is some more glazing that I'm showing you guys and I was very very excited about this glaze. This is some really cool Japanese style Shino glaze. Like it looks red here but it is not going to be like this red after firing and this glaze looks different depending on how thick you apply it so if you apply like one or two coats it'll look a certain way but you know if you apply more the color will change a little i was fascinated by that and i think i went in with like four or five coats each brush on glaze dries pretty quickly so if you wait like three or four minutes between coats that's usually enough and after I had finished all the glazing and decorating, they were ready for their second firing. It's the part of the video where I talk you guys through my results and I'm also here to tell you that my ceramics update is now live on the website. Although if you were an email subscriber, you will have got access to shop like a day earlier. But yeah, you can check it out. There are a lot of things available. They would be cute gifts for others or yourself. I also have these earrings available that I'm crazy about. They're actually silver and ceramic together and they're cute and they're weightless and if you are a member of either of my channels you also get a discount as a little thank you and I think the first things that you saw me making were these floral agarbatti holders this is something that I had tried out in my previous collection I'd made a single one and I really like how it turned out so I made some tweaks the flowers are now bigger and I have five of them available with five different glazes because I don't like repeating the exact same things. There are three that are more pastel. Two of these are made using that very cool Japanese style glaze that I showed you guys, the one that applies red. Something interesting about the glaze is that it's multi-tonal. So I love glazes that have these different dimensions visible in them. And the next thing were these leaf plates also another repeat something i'd made previously so i have two leaves made with white clay three that i made with the textured buff clay it looked like a chocolate brown when it was wet but after it's fired it's turned into this really beautiful like beige with little specks of black in it i think i like it more than the white clay for the buff clay you guys remember i carved the bottoms i also think that the carved bottoms are interesting because they add like this nice tactile texture that you can touch now here's something that didn't turn out exactly as i expected the cat figurines these were also repeats you know i had made some cat figurines in my first collection which i decided to keep for myself and i thought i'd make some more in some cases the new black underglaze that i bought ran and so they just look a little bit messy and they didn't turn out as adorable as I'd expected. I don't think I'll be making more of these in the future, you know. The ceramic spoons were a success. This carved flat spoon, I glazed it like a sunflower. It turned out quite nicely. 
and then the other spoon made with the pinch and coil method also turned out pretty adorable since these are both glazed they are technically food safe ceramic spoons are usually made just for decoration they're not going to be very ergonomic to eat out of you can keep them in your kitchen dining area wherever both of them have holes so you can tie little cords and hang them somewhere also one thing that was a big part of like my first collection if you saw the video i made a lot of little ceramic wall hangings that i added macrame cord or jute to so i tried out making some different things i have two of these slightly bigger flowers the first one says plant parent on it and this one just turned out perfect i used green under glaze on the inside after i stamped it green macrame cord and the next one is an affirmation and it says can stop will stop so you probably heard the phrase can't stop won't stop i think it's a big part of like hustle culture and all something that tells us we need to constantly be going we need to constantly be doing stuff this is a reminder to take rest to take breaks to listen to your body and mind stopping is not a bad thing when my first collection sold out one thing that i got the most queries about like when i would restock were celestial moon and star wall hangings so i made a few more this is like white clay tears with a little bit of a light green glaze white clay transparent glaze it's not just a plain crescent moon it's the one from the nursery rhymes that has a nice restful face this one's actually white clay but it's the first time i tried covering something with black glaze probably one of my favorites right now the one made using buff clay with the speckles i didn't glaze this piece i just added same face details with under glaze and i tied this up with jute one thing that i was nervous about was making larger pieces but i pushed myself to make this little planter and it turned out so amazingly so this is something that i made for my cousin because she had watched one of my house plant videos and she's interested in plants so i promised her i would give her a plant i've divided this from my own plant you know i even made a video on how you can like multiply your plants and stuff i'll link it over there so instead of just giving her the plant in a normal planter i thought i would make her a planter with her name on it so it's kimberly here and most of this planter is left unglazed but then i've glazed the flowers so i'm taking orders for customized planters because i think it would be like the most special gift ever this is something that i am offering for a very limited time on my website i'll probably have the listing up for maybe like a week and that's it if you order a customized planter please note that it can take like one and a half month to produce because ceramics are slow so it needs to like dry and be fired twice you can add your own name you can add a phrase if you're gifting it to somebody you can put the person's name and you can choose the motifs also this one has flowers but i can do so many other things like moon stars and i'm working on a cat one right now and i'm definitely a little nervous about taking custom orders but i'm going to go for it you know so if you're looking for a special birthday or anniversary gift for anyone close to you especially for dates in early 2022 you should probably place an order right now you know i even tried making a base plate for this remember this cracked in two places and i kind of know why it cracked but you guys remember when i was building the wall i built it with many separate pieces instead of one piece so it's usually recommended that you minimize the like separate pieces you use one piece as much as possible because uh, the more joints that there are the more chance of cracking at the joint but that's okay i know what i did wrong and we try again next time another thing that i tried for the first time that turned out so cute are these little coasters this one has plant parent on it and this one says but first chai made with the buff clay with the speckles and this is unglazed i'm going to put little stickers at the bottom so that these sit nicely on your table these are not going to scratch your table or anything i also am listing customized coasters on the website so if you would like your own name your own design on coasters as a nice little gift for yourself or a loved one or you could even do like a cute bff design then same as the planter these are available for only a limited time you can only buy it for like a week and after you buy the listing then i'll start making it i had this idea for a wall hanging of making like a really minimal boho rainbow sort of thing so that's what this is i used buff clay 
I've just added white glaze here that looks really shiny and nice and added macrame cord. This one might be my favorite piece from the entire collection. I use this very cool satin matte glaze on it. So I don't think the camera is capturing how interesting this looks. It's not completely matte. It has the tiniest bit of shine but it's just really really beautiful. This is made as a little trinket dish, something you can keep on your bedside. And it even stands up like this. It would just look so cute on a desk, right? I'm very, very tempted to keep this for myself, but I am listing this one. So this will also be available. The satin glaze that I used for this is kind of more pricier than all of the other glazes. I think the results are worth it, but the brand that made this glaze just kind of got discontinued recently which really really sucks so all i have is one small bottle that's it so i'm only going to be able to maybe make a few more pieces of this let's see this stack is so satisfying so i made a few of these little floral dishes these are meant for your bedside or your dressing table i love making these cute dishes for around the house and i've made them with white clay as well as buff clay and all of the glazes and decorations are a little bit different you know and you could even use these to light incense cones or anything like that this particular one is kind of special because this one i'm selling as a set uh, with this ring cone i've always wanted to make a ring cone and i glazed this with this like really cool petal formation and they just look really adorable together. Now that I've recently got back into bar soap as a way to minimize my use of like single use plastics, I wanted to try and make some soap dishes. So I experimented with a couple of ideas. Both of them turned out really cute. First, this little leaf dish using buff clay with the center glazed. This has really good drainage because nobody likes soggy soaps. They are my biggest annoyance. This takes a lot of effort to make and decorate but the results are worth it because it's such a showstopper. Most of it is left raw and only the flower and leaves are glazed. And the flowers and leaves are also raised. So you keep your soap on top. It's gonna stay dry, the water will go down and the inside of the flowers also have drainage holes. Another idea that I had is are uh, these really cute cat bell type things. If you keep it next to a window, like now I'm shaking them, otherwise they're not going to ring as much. I have one white one. Now on this, the whisker under glaze ran a little bit. There are two fishes on each one. Then I have a couple of these buff ones also available. Again, I think the buff one looks cuter. But the white one is glazed and shiny, the buff one is not glazed. They all have little tails at the back, you know. And I even added some texture to the fish here. And I love the sound they make, I think it's really calming as well. I think I've shown you almost everything that's available for the drop today. And as always, I'm also selling off seconds. So that means whenever pieces have really minor defects, like surface cracks or underglaze has run, they are little less than perfect, but they're still cute. They will also be available for purchase at a discounted rate. I hope they can still find, you know, happy homes. I think it's great to be able to love seconds because it reflects and mirrors real life. Everything is not always perfect, but you can still find beauty in it. And keeping stuff out of landfills is important, I think. And this isn't everything for 2021. I've also been working on a mini Christmas collection. That's something that I'll probably list in a week or two. I worked on making these little Christmas tree ornaments and I love how they turned out. So I have a couple of sets of like larger full-size ornaments if you have a tall Christmas tree, like five, six feet or whatever. So we didn't bother making the space for a big tree. I bought a mini tree this year so i made mini ornaments also they are also very cute of course i'm keeping a set or two for myself a few sets and a few individual ones will also be available for sale coming really soon thank you for watching this video and i'd love to chat with you guys in the comments